The Sea of Thieves story is scattered across the game, through tall tales and adventures that no longer exist, and a myriad of comics, books and board games. So why not chronicle everything you need to know ahead of The Legend of Monkey Island releasing tomorrow? There's links through for more detailed videos on some of the topics covered in here and will be expanded over time. Now onto the complete Sea of Thieves story so far. Before the pirates that we all know and love arrived in the Sea of Thieves, it was inhabited by an ancient race of people. They were hunter-gatherers that created stone monuments and not a lot was known about them, other than they were well versed in magic. When the pirates arrived to the Sea of Thieves, all that's left of them are ruins, crude paintings and artefacts. No one knew why they left the Sea of Thieves, at least not when the pirates arrived. More of their history is discovered as the story goes on, but right now, that's all we need to know. The Sea of Thieves was rediscovered by a man known as Ramsay. He and his crew managed to navigate the Devil's Shroud, a strange mist that envelops the Sea of Thieves. The crew sails on the magpie's wing, included on that crew is a young intellectual called Mercia, a disgraced aristocrat called Rathbone, and an old tinkerer called Shan. In the Sea of Thieves, the crew spends a month exploring it, discovering its riches and strange magical properties. After the initial month, they sailed outside of the Sea of Thieves to tell of their adventures. Ramsay had left behind two newborn twins and a wife, so it would make sense for him to return eventually. During this time, Rathbone decides to sell a copy of the map to the Sea of Thieves to a pirate known as Stitcher Jim. The map is copied and sold until the route there becomes a poorly kept secret amongst pirates. When the crew of the Magpie's Wing do return, the Sea of Thieves had become a wild frontier of many crews scrambling to explore and loot it. Inevitably, this caused several conflicts and skirmishes to break out. At some point, Mercia overhears a woman talking about a hidden island with a network of ruins underneath, but the map to it is in the wreck of the old woman's ship. This leads on a voyage, with the crew eventually discovering and rescuing some merfolk. As the merfolk are freed, Ramsay and co sail to Kraken's Fall, where they learn the origins of the merfolk and their relationship with the ancients. The two races would help each other in times of need. The ancients would deal with great sea monsters, and the mer would share their knowledge of magic with the ancients. One example was when the Ancients chained Old Mother to Kraken's Fall. Old Mother was the largest of the Krakens. The Ancients used unbreakable chains, fashioned with mer magic to ensure she never escaped. It took many years, but she eventually died of starvation. However, one day, the Ancients disappeared, never to be seen again. Until the pirates arrived, with the mer believing them to be the same people from a thousand years ago. The mer had given Ramsay the very chain that bound Old Mother as a thanks for saving their kin, with an agreement to help lost pirates back to land or their ships whenever they could. Ramsay, hearing the story of the Mer, believed there was more to the Sea of Thieves than a place to plunder endlessly, although the activity at Kraken's Fall had caused something to stir in the caves below. Around two years after the Sea of Thieves had been rediscovered, Ramsay called a meeting on Golden Sands Outpost. Several notorious crews agreed to the meeting. Amongst the rogues gallery were the crew of the Morning Star, Captain Briggsy and Gideon Greymarrow, all with different views on the pirate's life. Ramsay had fashioned several chests out of the chains. These could only be opened with a set of skeleton keys. Many pirates tried to get into the chests, a challenge set by Ramsay himself, but no one could succeed. It was then Ramsay would propose that the pirates sail in an alliance, not only to protect one another from the dangers of the Sea of Thieves, but also to ensure the infighting between pirates stops. The chests were filled with Ramsay's vast hoard of loot, and as he had the skeleton keys, he could open them should any pirates bring them to him. Gideon Greymarrow fiercely opposed this, seeing Ramsay as some jumped up pirate lord. Before the meeting could conclude, an alarm was raised. A kraken had come to attack Golden Sands outpost. A mighty battle ensued, with the crews of the Magpie's Wing, the Morning Star, and Briggsy all working together to defeat their foe. The pirates had succeeded, but at a great cost. Ramsay was dragged off his ship by the Kraken, his leg crushed, only to be saved by Rathbone. Unfortunately for Ramsay, Rathbone had planned to betray him, all because he loved gold more than anything else, along with Ramsay keeping him out of the loop. He plucked Ramsay's wedding ring off his finger and his skeleton keys and dropped him into the sea. Rathbone would go on to found the gold hoarders, with his greed leading to a great amount of cursed treasure at the island known as Tribute Peak. This treasure supposedly caused him to become the gold hoarder. The gold hoarder is a skeleton lord, and a skeleton lord is a more powerful and intelligent version of the regular skeletons we see in the game. The gold hoarders held the keys and employed pirates to retrieve Ramsay's treasure. The pirates would get a cut for delivering them, with the gold hoarders claiming the lion's share. 
Ramsey would go on to survive this encounter, with the merfolk returning him to Golden Sands. With his leg replaced with a peg and recovered, he would find out that many pirates had been inspired by his speech and bravery. These pirates would go on to form an alliance. This alliance was for legendary pirates who sailed, fought, and looted the Sea of Thieves together. Any slight against a single member was a slight against all, and those who knew kept well away. Well, almost everyone would. As the pirate lords rise to fame and exploits spread their way across the Sea of Thieves, a much darker force would rise to meet his match. I believe this occurs roughly at the same time as the meeting at Golden Sands. As a boy, Flameheart's father, who he had never met, was accused of crimes of piracy and the Grand Maritime Union seized goods from his home as a recompense. They ended up being brutally beaten by Flameheart. This was the day he became a man. The man would sail around with his new crew and ship seized from the docks pillaging and destroying merchant vessels. He took the name Captain Flameheart in his stride. The crew would whisper about how they could see the flame burning in his chest whenever Flameheart saw the Grand Maritime Union. His reputation became so fierce, no mercenary would take the bounty put on his head. Until one day, he vanished. Few knew of the truth. He now sailed the waters of the Sea of Thieves, challenging the pirates who made their home there. One fateful day, he charged aboard another vessel to find something different a baby boy swaddling and now orphaned. Without a word, he took the boy aboard into his cabin and set the quickest cause out of the Sea of Thieves. He brought the boy to his estate and raised him so he'd want for nothing. However, time away from the Sea of Thieves saw Flameheart's influence wane. He planned to return but needed the ship. He had set his sights on the Burning Blade. Flameheart and his comrades gained employment aboard until one night they overthrew the captain, marooning him on an island. They drank from chalices stored in an obsidian casket to celebrate. The chalices were cursed and changed him and the crew into fierce skeletons. Flameheart had become a skeleton lord embroiled by a war of his own making. Nine years after the Sea of Thieves was discovered, Ramsay had sailed the magpie's wing extensively and his endeavours earned him the moniker of the pirate lord. Remember how I said no one would attack Athena's fortune? Well, one person was not afraid to do so. The Burning Blade launched a sneak attack on the Magpie's wing, brutalizing her with cursed cannonballs. The ship would be scuttled eventually, but an ancient artifact known as the Shroudbreaker was thrown overboard to prevent it falling into Flameheart's hands. Flameheart's power and ferocity would continue to grow over the next 20 years. During this time, the Ferryman would sacrifice himself to gain the power to bring pirates back from the Sea of the Damned. However, it is unclear when this happens. Many years later, after his crewmate Mercia had passed away and Shan retiring, the Pirate Lord travelled to Tribute Peak, the domain of the Gold Hoarder and his former friend. He sailed on Athena's fortune, his crimson sailed galleon. He delved into the depths of the ruins under the island, meeting with the Gold Hoarder. He mentioned how he was a bad captain to Rathbone and a bad friend, but now it was time to retire. What was the point of sailing the Sea of Thieves if you had no friends to tell of your adventures? The Pirate Lord would go on to sail his galleon into a cave, converting the wreck into a tavern for any legendary pirate to grab a drink and tell their story. Athena's fortune was solidified, as were the Pirate Lord's pirate legends. He was gifted a special necklace by Mercia bearing the Reaper's Mark, believed to be cursed, and turning the Pirate Lord into a ghost. Seven years or so prior to the events of the game, Captain Flameheart was at the height of his power. The Pirate Lord, now in his spiritual form, received word of Flameheart moving to conquer the Sea of Thieves. Many undead and disgruntled pirates had become frustrated with the Sea of Thieves. See, the Pirate Lord allowed the likes of the Gold Hoarders, Merchant Alliance and the Order of Souls to trade in the Sea of Thieves. Some begrudged this as many pirates were forced to work for them. Flameheart promised to unchain the seas by destroying the trading companies, placing him as the king of the Sea of Thieves. Moreover, the Pirate Lord heard of a great weapon that might just defeat Flameheart and the Burning Blade once and for all. Both were unkillable and unbeatable on account of his dabbling in ancient magic. The Pirate Lord recruited the crew of the Morningstar to help. Having spent many years with the captain of the vessel, his name was Eli Slate. On the other hand, a crew of those pirates frustrated with the trading companies would pledge their allegiance to Captain Flameheart, as he too heard of this weapon. The Dark Ritual was completed, Captain Harry Harkley of the Prideful Dawn pledged his allegiance to Flameheart by drinking from a cursed chalice and plunging his hand into a chest of rage. Both crews raced across the Sea of Thieves, with multiple skirmishes and fights ensuing. 
The Morningstar recruited the Skeleton, who happened to be one of Flameheart's previous crew members before he was marooned. His name was Duke and believed Flameheart's obsession with battle had consumed him. Before long, the crew of the Morningstar would arrive in the Sea of the Damned to retrieve the weapon. The weapon was no weapon, but a ship left behind by the Ancients. It had been left in the Sea of the Damned as a means for future people to use it against great calamities. The ship was christened the Ophelia after the missing sister of Fontaine, a crew member of Eli Slates. It had the power to resist cursed cannibals fired by the Burning Blade. Flameheart made his move and the final battle for the Sea of Thieves would begin. Skeletal vessels and Athena's fortune clashed, with the Burning Blade waiting on the wings. The Ophelia was adept at clearing ships on account of its cursed protection. Flameheart realised this, and sent Harry Harkley, now transformed into a ferocious Ashen Lord, to dispatch the Ophelia. Having succeeded, despite Harkley's apparent death, the Burning Blade moved in for the kill. With the Ophelia scuttled and Flameheart on the cusp of victory, one last ditch effort was made. Duke rode to the Burning Blade to surrender, facing his captain one last time. The two played chess in the captain's cabin, musing on their past differences. Flameheart had a lockbox on his desk, a magical box used to pass messages through or to listen to conversations. This box was linked to the many boxes of wondrous secrets, the very same ones Flameart crafted became his downfall. DeMarco, one of the Pirate Lord's children, tipped gunpowder into the box of wondrous secrets Duke had kept, causing large amounts to spread around the Burning Blade. Duke lit the gunpowder, destroying him and scuppering the Burning Blade. Captain Flameheart had been defeated. Or so they thought. The boy left in Flameheart's estate would learn of his father's death. That boy, now a man, sought to follow in his father's footsteps. Flameheart had filled his head with the wondrous stories of the Pirate Lord and the Gold Hoarder, even the legendary ferryman. The man would travel to the Sea of Thieves, taking up his father's name and seeking his own adventures. He commissioned a pirate called Isidro to take him there and purchased a ship with a single ancient coin found in a tavern. The ship was called the Silver Blade. Captain Flameheart Jr. travelled to the Sea of Thieves and sought his first voyage. Through a chance encounter, he met with a member of the Order of Souls. She tasked him and his crew to recover a strange chest. With the crew travelling multiple days into the wilds, the chest was eventually dug up at the base of a calcified tree. The chest was strange, humming softly. So strange in fact, the crew locked it in the brig of their ship. On their journey back, another galleon attacked them, wanting to claim the chest for themselves. Captain Flameheart Jr. veered the ship into the Devil's Shroud as he believed it would hide the ship. The mysterious shroud would worm its way into the ship, breaking it into pieces and allowing the sea to rush into the newly formed holes. The crew abandoned ship and washed up at a nearby island. They found a riddle leading them into a cave. They drank the sweet water that flowed through there. Eventually, just like his father, Junior would soon find himself a skeleton, as his skin fell away and his appetite ceased. This was no accident, for the man who placed the riddle in the deepest and darkest recesses of the cave was found by Junior. He was simply known as the Captain. The Captain had lured Junior here to make him a replacement for his father, the very same who marooned him here over 20 years ago. But he was not as he was mutinied. The Captain was also a walking, talking skeleton lord. Shortly after the game begins, an odd fellow appears at the tavern. He hands out adventures and voyages to pirates with strange objectives, with the first tasking them to sit on skeleton thrones around the map. This man, although he doesn't realise it fully, is Duke. Skeletons aren't allowed back from the Sea of the Damned, but seeing his heroism, the ferryman granted Duke a second chance after spending six or so years there. Duke lost his memories of his links to Flameheart and joined the Build Rats, formed by Lorena. Two months after the events of the game begin, a mysterious NPC appears at the Sharkbait Cove. This NPC is Merrick. Merrick had helped awaken an ancient sea monster some months prior by playing an ancient sea shanty. When another crew joined in, both ships were attacked and Merrick was the only survivor. Merrick tasked crews with recovering his journals around the Sea of Thieves. Once this had been completed, the crew returned to Merrick who began to share his ancient shanty. The pirates would carry the shanty from Sharkbait Cove to Devil's Ridge. With five or more players, the ancient creature was summoned. A megalodon, the hungering one, attacked the crews and a ferocious battle began. Many days and nights passed, with the hungering one slain. However, this great battle would awaken its children from the deep. The Crested Queen, Shadow Moor, Ancient Terror, and the Shrouded Ghost would make their appearances known in the coming months. Two months after the hungering deep, a weaponsmith at Golden Sands Outpost made a discovery that shaped the future of the Sea of Thieves. 
Wanda would team up with another smith known as Salty to strike it rich. Salty had found the wreck of the burning blade and Wanda dredged up one of its cursed cannons. They began to experiment and reforging the cursed cannibals from the metal. They tried to sell them at outposts but they were denied a permit because of the danger the balls presented. Although the cannon wasn't the only thing that came back from the burning blade. Wanda began to feel angry, furious even, at the outposts for shunning her. But this fury was like no other. Wanda began to change with her arm becoming skeletal and a voice appeared in the back of her head. Wanda embraced the skeleton curse caused by the cannon and rallied skeletons behind her. The skeleton fleet laid claim to the outposts and challenged pirates to defeat them. Many crews across the Sea of Thieves fought over the month to defeat the skeleton crews as they employed cursed cannibals against the pirates. This was not Wanda's day, as each region was freed from the skeletal clutches, with Wanda herself being defeated in the final battle. Wanda sunk to the depths, unable to die in her cursed form. Two months after the events of Cursed Sails, a stranger appeared on the Lies backbone. Stitcher Jim had escaped the Devil's Roar. The Devil's Roar is a volcanic, treacherous region that had been hidden in the Shroud for many years. When the Shroud enveloped it, him and his former crew became stranded there. See, Jim and the Forsaken Alliance, headed by Captain Grace Morrow, had discovered the region before the ferryman had popped into existence. Before this though, any pirates dying in the Sea of Thieves would be dead for good. As the Forsaken Alliance discovered the Devil's Roar, they were keen to explore the region. Stitcher Jim was still secretly loyal to the Gold Hoarder and feared the Alliance would discover the existence of the Shores of Gold. However, he had also peered into a box of wondrous secrets, inflicting a bout of madness on him. Jim went on to kill his Alliance members, either at the command of the Gold Hoarder or some other nefarious figure. Grace Morrow was poisoned but survived this on account of her general badassery. She would then hunt down Stitcher Jim for the rest of their lives, until he escapes the Devil's Roar during the events of Forsaken Shores. Around one year after the game begins, rumours of the Shroud Breaker begin circulating again. Many crews scramble to find it, but a great many voyages lie ahead to retrieve it. The last known whereabouts was with the Pirate Lord before his ship was sunk. The Shroud Breaker leads to the Tribute Peak, where an unimaginable treasure is located. An unnamed crew retraces footsteps and obtain the Shroud Breaker, Unfortunately, it's missing three gems to complete it. The last known person to use it successfully was Captain Briggsy. The crew head to Madame Olivia of the Order of Souls, who helped them track her down. Briggsy made it to the Shores of Gold, but paid a terrible price. She too had been afflicted with the Skeleton Curse and became another fearsome Skeleton Lord. The crew does track her down and defeats her, returning the skull to Olivia. Olivia draws her memories from the skull and sends them on a course to retrieve the stone. They end up using the constellations to obtain the stone, with Briggsy leaving it in a vault. Briggsy had commissioned his trap maker to hide the other gem, with the crew working through the trap maker's riddles to obtain it. Finally, the last stone had already been retrieved by Gideon Greymarrow. Greymarrow had hunted down the crew of the Morning Star to get it, then being bound to chest using a special ritual to ensure they never board the Ferry of the Damned. Eli Slate and Co. were freed by the crew. The crew was then tasked with tracking down Greymarrow, defeating him to get the last stone and completing the Shroud Breaker. With the Shroud Breaker hull, the crew travel to the Shores of Gold to obtain the fantastic treasure that lies beneath. Instead, after overcoming his traps and gauntlets, the crew come face to face with the Gold Hoarder himself. The final fight occurs with the Gold Hoarder smashed to pieces and his skull taken back to the Order of Souls. The Pirate Lord congratulates the crew and warns them to leave the cursed treasure, informing them that this whole adventure was about the glory, not the gold. He takes the Shroud Breaker and returns it to its resting place. A few months after the event of the Shores of Gold, a dig site appears at an uncharted island marked at I-12 on the map. The following month, a masked stranger begins showing up, with Stitcher Jim appearing too. Jim was saved from the Devil's Roar by this stranger. The stranger gets pirates to deliver Reaper's chest to Duke for her, along with the Dark Relics and the Crates of Bone Dust. The month after this, the Dark Relics are used by Stitcher Jim to transform Old Boot Fort into the Fort of the Damned. The Sea of the Damned is brought partially into the Sea of Thieves with this ritual, but this was just a test. Jim uses the relics again to free Sir Arthur Pendragon from a painting he was bound to. This was on the wreck of the Black Witch over at Shipwreck Bay. Pendragon was bound to her after an assassination attempt on Grey Marrow. Pendragon was previously the Champion of Souls, working for the Order of Souls. He would hunt down Skeleton Lords and his sword could also be used to free souls from the Binding Ritual. Keen to continue his work, even when dead, 
Pendragon tasks a crew with following in the path of the Ashen Dragon. The Ashen Dragon allegedly banned the captains of two vessels that attacked her. Pendragon and co track down the first two captains and free them. However, they both remember something dangerous is on the Ashen Dragon, believed to be a treasure by both crews. The final captain is laid to rest at Flintlock Peninsula, carried by skeletons and an entity known as the Commander. The coffin they carry ends up in a hidden vault. Unsealing the rune sarcophagus reveals the skeletal remains. Pendragon urges the crew to hand him the skull so the soul can be released. Pendragon uses his sword once again, releasing the soul. The flaming skull of Captain Flameheart lights up the sky, cursing those who defeated him. See, Flameheart's body was recovered by those loyal to him after the Burning Blade was scuttled. Flameheart was adept in the arcane arts and planned with his Ashen Lords that if he somehow was defeated, he would bind himself to his remains. Stitcher Jim had already peered inside one of his boxes of wondrous secrets and could be influenced into bringing him back. While Flameheart was able to manifest himself, he was still trapped in the Sea of the Damned. Five months later, this was now two years since the game began, the hunt for Stitcher Jim was on. He'd travelled to the Heart of Fire to enact a dark ritual. Pendragon and the crew followed Jim's path, ending up in the Devil's First. In the catacombs below, they traversed wicked traps and lava pits. Upon reaching the inner chamber, Jim plunged his hand into the Chest of Rage, believing this to bring back the Ashen Lords. This was a trick, with Flameheart fooling Jim into sacrificing himself, and all this happened while the Masked Stranger watched on. Jim fled, spurned by his naivety. The Masked Stranger had been working for Flameheart this whole time. But seeing Jim sacrifice himself, she'd been madly in love with Captain Flameheart since she first became a Skeleton Lord. The Masked Stranger was Wanda the Warsmith from Cursed Sails. She declared her love for Flameheart, only for him to laugh in her face. Meanwhile, the dig site had been completed, and a new servant had come to serve Captain Flameheart. With Wanda disillusioned, the Servant of the Flame finished the Reaper's hideout, forming the Reaper's Bones. The Reaper's Bones stood in opposition of the trading companies, spreading their aims through fire and bloodshed. Flameheart's head began manifesting across the Sea of Thieves with a ghostly fleet in tow. The fleets would haunt several islands across the Sea of Thieves, but with Flameheart unable to return to his physical form, he chose to withdraw for now. Captain Flameheart's Ashen Lords returned, with four of them waging war across the main regions of the Sea of Thieves. The pirates battled violently to destroy them once more. In the month following, Duke, who inadvertently helped the Masked Stranger, leaves the Bildrats to redeem himself. Just over a year after Flameheart withdraws, a castaway washes up at the outposts. This castaway was not from the Sea of Thieves, however. She talks of a legendary prisoner trapped forever in the Sea of the Damned, and the pirate's life is under threat, the Sea of Thieves is in danger, and only this prisoner can help save it. The crew reluctantly agrees to journey to the Sea of the Damned. They travel through the Dead Man's Grotto, arriving at the town of Sailor's Grave, where they meet the cursed captain. He knows how to board the Ferry of the Damned and rescue the prisoner. After reuniting his head with his body, the cursed captain allows the crew to use a robo on this ship. Upon boarding the ferry, the crew sneaks below deck to rescue the prisoner. Only for this prisoner to be Captain Jack Sparrow. Yes, seriously. At that moment, the Flying Dutchman attacks as Davy Jones has followed Jack to the Sea of Thieves. Jack stole something from Davy Jones, used it to travel to the Sea of Thieves, and now Jones wants it back. In the fray, Jack falls overboard and the crew escape back to the Sea of Thieves. The castaway sends the crew in search of Jack's crew. The Black Pearl was attacked by Sirens when it arrived, with the crew being captured and Jack perishing in the fight. In the southwest of the map, the crew finds some debris. Diving deep down, they find the wreck of the Black Pearl and the Siren Citadel. As they're lured into the structure by a beautiful voice, they journey deeper into the Citadel to rescue the crew. Eventually, they come face to face with Ocean Crawlers, the Sirens, and then the Kraken. But not only has the Black Pearl been claimed by the Sirens, the Silver Blade is there also. Using the Silver Blade as a lift, they defeat the Kraken. The Siren Queen awaits, who hates humans for what they did to her king. It turns out that the ancient humans murdered the Siren King as he turned from human to Siren, unleashing the Siren Curse and causing a war between them, the Merfolk and the Ancients. After defeating the Siren Queen, the crew of the Black Pearl are rescued. The Castaway and Gibbs send the crew back to the Sea of the Damned. The crew travel through several of Jack's memories, tangling with his foe's past. This culminates in meeting Jack in the Tavern of the Damned. This is where Jack is convinced to return to the Sea of Thieves to help defeat Davy Jones. The castaway is revealed to be Calypso. Jack and the crew are tasked with finding out Davy Jones' plans. They sail north to the Coral Fortress, one of the Siren Queen's strongholds. She allied with Davy Jones as he was able to summon the Kraken for her. 
Upon battling up the fortress, the crew happened upon a meeting room. It was here that Davy Jones, the Gold Hoarder, Wanda and Duke meet a plan to end the pirate's life. Jones plans to take the place of the ferryman, so eternal life ends and only those loyal to the brethren can return. In the dead man's chest, it is revealed that the captain holds Jones's heart and plans to return to the Sea of Thieves if Jones succeeds. The crew attempts to stop phase one of the plan, with Jones escaping and the Gold Hoarder being defeated once again. The final battle of the Brethren starts. Jones had summoned a coral spiral and began to use the treasure Jack stole to bridge the gap between the Sea of the Damned and the Sea of Thieves. After clearing waves of phantom ships and Eli Slate, Pendragon, and Rose and George lending a helping hand, the crew assault the Spire. There they meet Cutler Beckett, sorry, Lord Beckett, at the peak with the dead man's chest. Inside is a locket, which Calypso uses lightning to destroy. Finally, Jones uses the Dutchman as a last ditch effort to complete his plans, but is destroyed. The ferryman imprisons Jones in the Ferry of the Damned and gives Jack a second chance at life. The merfolk raise the pearl from the depths, and Jack and co leave the Sea of Thieves using the golden treasure, vowing to return once again. Just under four years after the events of the game begin, and six months after Jones was defeated, several islands around the Sea of Thieves become shrouded in a mist. Most importantly, the mist had caused the inhabitants of Golden Sands to disappear. Moreover, an ally of the Pirate Lord has appeared. Bell is investigating the phenomenon of the Green Mist and sends crews to Shipwreck Bay. Here, the crews discover some memories of the Servant of the Flame. The Servant is revealed to be Flameheart's son and is vying to bring his father back. See, Flameheart has also disappeared at this point and his phantom head is nowhere to be seen. The Servant has summoned a Soul Flame Captain, an entity from the Sea of the Damned. Fearing the worst, the crew dispatches it. This was a trap, but defeating the Soul Flame Captain allows the veil between worlds to be thinned. Six sea forts are pulled through and manifested around the Sea of Thieves. The very month after, the Golden Sands residents appear at these forts. It was the Servant and the Reapers who kidnapped them. They are rescued by the crews across the Sea of Thieves, but the Servant fails to recruit Wanda's sister as their new warsmith, although they do overhear that Flameheart has an ancient prisoner in the Sea of the Damned. Bell figures out that the Reapers are looking for the Veil of the Ancients. The Veil is an ancient artifact that can be used to travel to and from the Sea of the Damned at will. However, she needs the help of Merrick. It turns out the Veil was swallowed by the Shrouded Ghost. The race for the Veil is on, with crews coming together to summon the Shrouded Ghost just like the Hungering One. As the battle escalates, the Servant summons ghost ships to try to secure the Veil, with Pendragon offering his aid too. Ultimately, the Veil is secured by the Pirate Lord's allies, albeit an incomplete one. Merrick travels to Golden Sands to help rebuild. Just like the Shroud Breaker, it needs gems to function. Now the scramble for the Veil stones begins. The Reapers have two, one is on a convoy of ships sunk by the Sirens, one is held by an ancient priest, and one is with the Spanish Phantoms allied with Flameheart. One can also be found buried by the Ancients, but only three were required and Legend of the Veil messes with the canon a little bit. In the end, the stones are secured by Athena's fortune, the Servant has failed to secure a means for his father to return, but all is not lost. Merrick is having issues dispelling the fog from Golden Sands. It turns out relic caches were buried around the island, but the Reaper's bones are keen that it remains desolate forever. This marks the first community decision. The Reapers are tasked with delivering relic caches or blowing up Soul Flame rowboats on the shores of Golden Sands. Athena's Fortune has to deliver supplies to Merrick. In the end, Athena's Fortune score a victory, with the fog being dispelled, Golden Sands is rebuilt into new Golden Sands, and the Pirate Lord vows to bolster its defences, with it becoming Port Merrick down the road. The Servant suffers a terrible defeat, again, but the war is just beginning. Three months after the Shrouded Islands, Merrick is missing. He was lured out to the island at K9 and murdered by a masked stranger. One very reminiscent of Wanda the Warsmith. Bell sends a crew to follow the murderer's footsteps. The murderer is revealed to be working for the Dark Brethren, now just made up of Wanda the Warsmith and Duke. However, the new masked stranger recovers the remains of the Gold Hoarder, for his eyes were actually Veil Stones. Fusing it with a Siren Trident allows them to travel to and from the Sea of the Damned. With Flameheart's meddling with the Veil Between the Worlds, the Brethren manage to escape the Sea of the Damned. But now, they can travel to and from at will. The Masked Stranger reveals herself as Amaranta, a minor character who worked with the Sea Dogs. The Sea Dogs were founded by the Pirate Lord's twin children, DeMarco and Lissetti. DeMarco was murdered just before the Brethren returns. Merrick's soul is transported to the Sea of the Damned after he's murdered. Wanda and Duke are there waiting for him so they can extract information from Merrick. 
The Pirate Lord is concerned about the information they may obtain and sends crews to rescue him. They battle through the Brethren's allies and free Merrick. The Brethren threaten to hunt Merrick wherever he goes, so Merrick decides to take the blessing of Athena's fortune and becomes a ghost like the Pirate Lord. With the Brethren slinking into the shadows again, something worse stirs. Bell, too busy to help Merrick, fears something darker will come to pass. He discovers a prophecy from the Ancients, that the Burning One will seek a moment of resurrection at the time of resurrection, ushered in by the Herald of the Flame. First, she needs allies, so she reaches out to the Ancients. We learn the Ancients never disappeared or went extinct, but chose to migrate to the Sea of the Damned. The Sea of the Damned is a place of memory, but can be shaped, so it became their form of paradise. Almost all of them went aside from the undesirables, but more importantly, their warrior deity called the Great Warrior was unable to. He was bound to his remains in case he was needed again in the future, with the Siren Queen capturing the body parts. The Ancients agree to ally with Bell if she can recover the remains. So, Bell gets pirates to delve into the Sunken Kingdom to gather the pieces. Once all three parts are together, a ritual is performed to release the Great Warrior's soul. The Reapers attempt to stop it, but the Great Warrior's soul escapes to the Sea of the Damned. The Ancients vow to fight for Athena's fortune, and the Great Warrior will help them when needed. A month later, Bell tracks down Stitcher Jim. He escaped the Heart of Fire and went into hiding, vowing to destroy Flameheart. He travels to Flintlock Peninsula to grind his bones to dust, but is interrupted by the Servant of the Flame. Jim has been afflicted with the Ashen Curse, and the Servant informs him of the prophecy. Jim was destined to become the Herald of the Flame. Jim was convinced of his destiny, and therefore drinks from an ancient chalice. He travels to Molten Sand's fortress to begin the resurrection ritual, and stores Flameheart's repaired skull and body in the vault. Bell and Pendragon send pirates to stop him. At the fort, Jim is destroyed and Pendragon destroys Flameheart's skull again. As the heroes regroup, the servant swoops in to recover his father's body and Jim's skull. Pendragon returns to the fort to finish the job, but misses his opportunity. The servant of the flame is not beaten yet. In a profane ritual, he changes Jim's skull to one more fitting of his father's visage. The time of resurrection lines up with the Festival of the Damned, with the servant planning to use the Dark Relics and Spanish forts to return his father from the Sea of the Damned. The second community decision has begun. Pendragon has caused this by his blunder, so he plans to use the sword as a conduit to seal Flameheart's soul in a painting. But they also need to capture the forts and Dark Relics to perform the ritual. If Athena's fortune succeeds, then Flameheart is banished to the painting and denied his body. If the Reaper's bones succeed, Pendragon is bound to the painting and Flameheart returns to his body. In a violent and fierce battle, the Reaper's bones decimate Athena's fortune. Pendragon gets banished to the painting, and Captain Flameheart is reborn once more. A few months later, the Brethren return to the Sea of Thieves in search of another artifact. They heard talk of Briggsy's finding the cure to the Skeleton Curse. They want it to recruit more members. To try and draw Briggsy out, they afflict Tasha the Tavern Maid with the Skeleton Curse, who is a close friend of Briggsy's. Madame Olivia sends pirates in search of Briggsy's possessions in an effort to find the cure for Tasha, and they do recover the objects. Madame Olivia divines some more memories from the artifacts. A month later, Madame Olivia has another path for the crew to trace. They're tasked to use Briggsy's spyglass to track down ancient constellations, which reveal the path to the cure. After travelling all over the wild, the crew learn the cure lies in a temple in the Sea of the Damned, but Briggsy could never figure out how to get there, resulting in her transformation into the Skeleton Lord. The Dark Brethren swoop in and as Briggsy's memory is manifested into a real person, they offer a temporary cure for the curse if Briggsy helps them find the temple. Briggsy agrees and Wanda leaves a cursed cannonball to stave off Tasha's transformation. Five months after Briggsy leaves, the crew has to head to meet with the Pirate Lord over by the wreck of the Magpie's wing. The Pirate Lord is beside himself, as someone has stolen a precious artifact from him. He asks the crew to track down the Deceiver and collect some ingredients for a compass to find them. The crew visits Madame Olivia, and with the assistance from a strange rat, steal Pendragon's pocket watch from her. They head to Shipwreck Bay, where the Burning Blade has begun reconstruction. They steal the gem from its eye to be used in the compass. Travelling over to Sanctuary Outpost, Madame Olive agrees to fuse the two together to form the compass. The compass leads the crew to Port Merrick into the tavern, underneath and into a vault. The vault has mementos from all around the last 12 adventures, but most importantly, the Sword of Souls is in the middle of the room. The blade is red, tainted with Captain Flameheart's soul. Then the Pirate Lord appears and then thanks the crew for being so gullible. He reveals himself to be an imposter and steals the sword, with the actual Pirate Lord appearing to tell the crew it is now travelled to the Sea of the Damned. 
Now, with Captain Flameheart's full return looming, Guybrush Threepwood imprisoned in the Sea of the Damned, and the Imposter at large with the Sword of Souls, the fate of the Sea of Thieves once again hangs in the balance. What will happen next in the Sea of Thieves? Find out tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please do like and subscribe for expansions to the Sea of Thieves lore, as well as discussions, news, and a cheeky guide or two. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.